Hey guys, this is Mario Kart. Uh, I'm going to be doing the last video for XNA Laura. Uh, this time I'm going to be showing you guys the GUI. Um, I took the importing script and the exporting script and uh, stuck them together and gave them the graphical interface. Um, shoot, I don't have it up here, but uh, I'm going to be showing you, that, showing you guys the, um, the script and uh, I'm going to be uh, demo, demoing or demonstrating uh, the importing and the exporting and just quickly uh, recapping some of the issues I may have talked about in the two videos, although I can't really quite remember what I was talking about. But uh, definitely, if you're having importing issues, watch the first video because I talk more about uh, some shading issues and how to remove it. Okay, so if you're getting into, you want to import something and get it up to render quality, uh, you should just check out this video here. I don't even know how long it is, but uh, worth the watch because you'll be able to fix some of the problems with the import. Um, but uh, just want to restress that the problems with the import has nothing to do with 3ds Max. Well, not with the sorry, not with 3ds Max. I mean, there's not a real, a real problem with the uh, script. It's just more of a problem with 3ds Max. Uh, the only thing you can do is try to rebuild your model to fit 3ds Max. It's just it would take too long to do in Max script. So that's why that's why you have possible shading issues. But anyway, yeah, watch that if you have problems with that. Uh, the exporting video uh, it's pretty much garbage because it's the whole GUI thing is up now and uh, this doesn't really show much besides me just exporting a, a cylinder so yeah anyway uh, so yeah uh, I'm gonna be posting up this video probably somewhere above here um, the script I'll be posting with the video the video and the script will be posted on YouTube so follow the, the, the YouTube link and go to the description bar underneath here or the video or whatever I'll probably have uh, a Mediafire link there and you can just download the script Okay. and then you just rock and roll from there okay so anyway um, the idea of this, uh, of this video is just to recap and introduce you guys to the new script uh, once you get the script you'll probably download it off Mediafire just save it to your desktop okay should have the same name or whatever whatnot doesn't matter uh, from here to install it or run it etc whatever uh, just drag and drop that's the easiest for me there's the script here Okay, it looks nice and simple. Uh, there are, all, of course, different ways you can install or run a script. Okay, um, another way you can do that is um, going through uh, Max Script at the top of 3ds Max. You can either go to Open or Run. So if you run it, it'll just run it directly. So, for example, if I go where's my desktop, if I go and click on it under Run, pops up self-explanatory. If you go to Open though. Um, this might take a while because it's the older Max. Um, it's going to load into memory, and you can actually install it to a menu item. Okay, and then when you restart Max, um, that menu item will actually save to your your Max folder, and uh, it'll keep booting up every time you restart Max, and you can just run it that way. You can see I have some old tabs here, and the the icons kind of disappeared, but um, same same idea. You just install it to your 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 uh, menu bar. Okay. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, I'm actually using an old uh, version of 3ds Max. This is uh, 3ds Max 8. Uh, I'm not 100% sure of the year or date it was released, but I th I'm thinking around 2004 time. Okay. Uh, one guy, he was trying to run the script with an older version of Max, uh, 3ds Max 7. Um, the script doesn't work with 3ds Max 7. I think. 7 might have been constructed between the years of 2002 and 2003. So it's not that I, I left it out on purpose, it's just 3ds Max 7 is mi missing a lot of features that didn't exist until Max 8. So you can't really do much with Max 7 because it doesn't have a extra support to deal with character models and skinning. So it used the old physics, phys or is it physics or ph physique or something like that modifier and. Um, that's really really outdated. Anyway, um, blah, 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 blah. so yeah, the script here. Once you get into your text area, you can just select all, and you can just uh, drag and drop and install it to there. Okay, so whatever, so that you can just run it like that. Easy peasy. Okay, so yeah, that's uh, how to install it. Now I'm going to explain a little bit about the converter. Okay, the GUI. So you got your import button, your export button, your scaling button. So say you want to you want to import your model twice as big. Okay, type in 2. It's twice as big. And then if you want it smaller, you would type in 0.5. That's half the size of 1, so that's reduced size. Okay, um, this works both for import and, and export. So if you typed in 2, it would be 2 times for import. So it would, if you imported something, it would be twice as big. Um, 
but since it also works for export, if you have two typed in there, it's going to divide by two when you export it. So when you export, it's going to divide it by two. The uh, reason why it does that is so your import export is hopefully equal. So when you import it, it'll, it, it'll go back on the same scale. Okay, so keep that in mind. Unless you, if you actually want to purposely make something mismatched in size, that you have to change it according on what you're doing import or export okay but uh, usually you you won't have to change this number hopefully not okay so anyway just whatever and then so anyway let's explain more about the import and uh, export buttons uh, import opens up the browse box you can open up a mesh file okay uh, XNA Laura uses mesh files okay so we can even open up Alistair here okay and you can open up open up Alistair and import them uh, you can also select ASCII which is a text file but uh, right now that isn't fully operational right now it's just data collection at this point so you can only really import the mesh file okay but uh, X uh, sorry um, I was gonna say XNA Laura but uh, Dunson if you go to here on the TR forms in here he released uh, some tools yeah I think this is download utilities um, you're going to need two utilities from him which are mesh ASCII to bin and bin to ask yeah you're no wait. yeah you're gonna need this one this this basically means text file to binary file or binary file and that's the one you need you can also download download this one it'll convert your binary to text file anyway you need those two regardless anyway um, <coughs> Oops. So yeah, um, once you, you, so that's your imports. Um, you can also hit this little plus button. Oh shoot! I gotta fix that. Uh, I gotta open up something. Okay, let's just import Alistair. Boink. Okay, so um, import and export does take some time, um, just because it's written in Max script. So scripting is a little, a, little uh, a lot slower than uh, a programming language. So it's got to go through 3ds Max, get interpreted, and then it's got to do its operations through Max. So it's got to do some extra communication between the machine and 3ds Max. Um, not only that, um, again, I am not uh, trained or anything in programming. Just just something I picked up and learned. So I don't, I don't even think I'm doing it right. Anyway, so this is Alistair. Uh, we're not going to get uh, in detail about what's going on here right now. Uh, I was just explaining this plus button. Okay, so if you import something, you could then click on the plus button. Okay, and uh, what happens there is it shows you the full file path. Okay, so you have blah 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 my program folders, whatever. Um, if you want, you can click use fixed path, and uh, once you close that, anytime you hit import, it'll just import Alistair automatically. Okay, it won't bring up that browse box anymore. Um, it'll just use that that path every single time, unless unless you disable it again, then it'll it'll ask for the browse box. Okay, uh, same thing for export. You get your browse box. Uh, you only have the text file that you can export, but uh, you can also use. Oh shoot, you have to use the browse box before you use the plus sign. That's why I said I had to fix that. That's really annoying. Anyway, once you use one of these two buttons, you can use you can use a fixed path. Okay. But anyway, and then what else? Okay, so the import and export options—they're um, pretty much um, pretty much useless. You don't have to not not useless, but uh, you probably won't have to change them. <coughs> Single mesh, um, Alistair here—he is just one solid mesh. Okay, but if you wanted multiple meshes, it would import based on material. So, uh, say Alistair had a, a separate texture for his face, his face would be separate. So let's just. Um, yeah, let's just delete him and import based on um, there's nothing here. Okay, uh, let's just import with that disabled. So if we import now, I really gotta fix that. And uh, so blah. Okay, so now we've re-imported re Alistair. Okay, um, what was I gonna say? Uh, yeah, so now he he's uh, diced up in little tiny meshes. So 
like I was just saying, it's now based off material. So his face was a separate face texture, so now his face is a separate face model. Okay. Oh, let me back up here. Um, yeah, also, you can notice that um, when I click on unhide all, some bones appear. Okay. Um, one guy requested that uh, he, that I um, have it so if you import a model, you can hide the. Um, the unused bones. So if I go to unhide by name, it'll show me everything that's hidden right now. So um, you can see any of the bones that, that said uh, unused, whatever, they're now hidden. Okay. Uh, I don't know why that's such a big issue because you can just go in here and hide anything that says that anyway. But anyway, um, it's there. So if you don't want to see it, you can you can isolate it that way. Um, I didn't uh, stick in the layer manager because it was um, kind of confusing because you have the loop through all the layers and find a free layer then make a new layer then add everything through a new layer I was just like what the freak so I didn't, I didn't add it by layers but if you wanted to add a layer you could just select the the whatever and uh, add add new layer somewhere create new layer okay so now where's the hide button yeah so there now you can hide based off of layer this won't hide all objects you want to hide all of as well yeah whatever so yeah, from here now you can just you can hide the bones through layers. Okay. Yeah. So that's yeah. I just wanted to explain that because one guy was like, "Are you hide stuff?" Well, I don't know. I just well, anyway. So yeah. Um, those are two import features. It's pretty simple. Import as one mesh, export as multiple meshes, and you can hide your stuff. Okay. Um, vertex normals were covered in the other video for import. Um, that's. I'll just quickly recap. Um, if you notice, uh, if I disable the maps here. Yes, um, you can see that the normals are just screwed up to the wazoo. Uh, the reason behind that is because uh, 3ds Max is constantly recalculating your normals. So anytime I make a change, I don't know if you can see stuff flickering, but you can see the model is recalculating the normals on the fly. So if you add anything from this uh, modifier tab, it will alter it will alter the normals from the model. So it's just simple as that. So anyway, when you import a new model to 3ds Max, what happens is 3ds Max deletes or erases all the normals and um, it, it recalculates them. So what happens here is um, this model is using uh, a, a polygon uh, that has two faces in the same space. So they call that double-sided polygon. So you, normally one polygon, you can see it through one angle and when you flip it upside down, you're supposed to see right through it. Okay, so just to illustrate that, if I create a plane what the shoot? No, oh, I'm in perspective mode. Or am I? Why did I break three max here? All right, let's just create a box. Okay, I can't even create a box. I hate you. <laughs> All right, let's just restart Max really quickly here. <clears throat> Balls. Boo. Okay. Um. Yeah. Sorry, I just came back. I just restarted Max because uh, I was incapable of creating a freaking box. Uh. Now I am. But anyway. Um. Boof. The point I wanted to make was if you create a plane in 3D, uh, 3D space, you, you shouldn't be able to see through the other side. Or you, sh you should be able to see through the other side, okay? Uh, a normal polygon in 3D space has only one direction, okay? Um, if it's got two, that's what they call double-sided polygons. You actually have um, one polygon same sharing this, two polygons sharing the same space, and uh, when 3ds Max tries to calculate normals, it says, whoa, I got too many faces on me, and that's why you get that blackness. So, yeah, anyway, um, I screwed that up, but, uh, yeah, so that's import, um, self-explanatory. Let's just, oh, wait, import. Let's just import something stupid, simple. That's not going to take forever, like this hair breed. <clears throat> Uh, it didn't have a normal issue. Anyway, yeah, um, this is pretty much um, 
yeah so the import works okay I haven't had any problems at least I don't think again um, not too many people tested my script out um, one guy tried but he had the wrong version of 3ds max so I mean, which by the way this does work from 3ds max 8 and up just not 3ds max 8 and below okay just to clarify anyway um, so that was importing um, if you want to scale the bones because one guy was just like Ah, the bones are too big for me. How do I make the bones smaller, mister? I'm like, well, okay. Well, you can just resize them or whatever. Anyway, but I did add the option to rescale those, but it's in a separate section. So if you type in bones in the scale box and hit enter, uh, you'll get a second menu here, okay? Uh, you can then type in the scale of your bones. So um, say you want your bones to be twice as big, I guess. Hit 2, and then you can just, um, oh, just use that. <coughs> you can see the bones are now astronomically large like friggin large stupid large okay you can change that again oh, I gotta retype it okay I think it was at like 0 .03 so it's like something really small okay um and say you wanna use this special button here that says guest size uh, you can use that too and what that does is now it will import and calculate the size for you based on distance although it doesn't look like it worked but anywho <clears throat> that's that if you want to rescale your bones you can um, let's see if there's anything else I need to explain here um, export with material names uh, this stuff is really not important to anybody but uh, export with material names that's with the exporting um, when it exports, it's going to label your meshes based on the na on the material names. And say so you didn't want it to do that, do that, you could just untick this box, and it's going to export with mesh names, which I don't really see the point of it. But anyway, uh, that's that. And uh, this is um, inches to centimeters and centimeters to inches. Um, XNA Laura is in inches. 3ds Max is in. Well, mine's in. Um, you set up. Mine's in something called generic units, which for some reason seems to be like centimeters. <laughs> okay, I'm from Canada, so we use centimeters and shit. So, yeah, that's why I converted the XNA, XNA Laura shit to centimeters. And when I export it out, I have to convert it back to inches. So I just took the ratio number, and uh, to get the stuff back to where it needs to be, I just scale it back down. So if you wanted to disable that, just type in one, type in one, and now there's no scaling scaling between anything. So type in one in all the scale box boxes, and now there's no scaling going on whatsoever. If you were finicky like that, but anyway, so that's that. So that's import. Uh, export is a lot easier. Okay. Um, so okay, so let's let's just get something going. Um, the export. I'm first going to show you guys how to rig up something because I know a lot of you guys are kind of kind of new to stuff and since only one guy tested my stupid script um, I'm going to show you guys how to rig something and then stick it into the thing so you can do stuff with the script sound good okay so let's do that okay um, so let's just take this girl from this old old PS2 game yeah Okay, so let's let's do her up because she's low polygon and it won't take freaking ten minutes to export. Okay, so um, the model here, yeah. So yeah, so let's just rig this darn thing. Okay, so say you had some like magical model that you found from some unnamed program and um, legal source. Um, you want to rig it, right? So in 3ds Max, it's pretty easy. You have these tabs, and they basically do everything that you need to want to do with your thingy. So, yes, yeah, so if you go under the creation tab, under systems, um, you have bones. Uh, this relates also to the application bar. So, you can go to create, yada, 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 yada. So, anyway, you can go to bones, and you can click, left click. Why is it not working? Work. Okay, so if you click, stuff should be appearing and making magical shoehorns. Okay, so um, that's how you create a bone. Okay, if the bone was too big, you would change your width here. So, say my bone was 100 by 100. 
that's obviously too big because look how big that bone is. Okay, vice versa. If you wanted to scale the bone, you should just scale through here. So I think it was at one before, so we'll just leave it back at one. Okay. So um, so yeah, you have these uh, orthographic views along with your perspective view. Uh, you can navigate your view viewports by clicking on. Oops, let's go back to the arrow by clicking on them. Okay. If you want to expand the viewport, over in this little corner, there's a button that says maximize your viewport. I'm sure there's a hotkey, but I don't know what the freaking hotkey is. So anyway, just click on that button, and it expands the the port. It's the same if you click on any other port, and you click on that button. Okay. So anyway, we're gonna go and enter one of the views here, probably the side view, and we just click any bone that's gonna be in the absolute center of the model. So usually it goes pelvis. Uh, yeah. Every time you wanna create a new bone, just left click. Okay. So click once, then drag it to where you wanna just create a new bone. Okay. So anyway, we're gonna create the pelvis. Create the stomach, create the upper torso, and the neck usually starts just before the neck. Then you go to the head, and then there's your head. Okay, oh, sorry. Uh, to exit, you're going to right click, and then that'll just create the little nub there, and that's, you just delete that because there's no point to having it. Okay, so that's your center bone here. The rest of the bones aren't in the middle of the model, so you start from a different view. So we're going to use the front view now instead. Okay, we only have to do half the body, then we can just mirror across the other bones. Okay, so basic skeletal system starts with um, uh, shoulders, and you got uh, arms, and um, ah shoot. Okay, let's just change this view really quickly here. What the heck? Where is this stupid? Uh, I have no clue where her elbow is. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's just uh, say her elbow is here, because I don't think it can go anywhere else. Okay, so we're just creating the rest of the bone chain there, and we're going to go back to here, and we're just going to create the legs. Okay, so legs, um, uh, the bone obviously starts where the pelvis starts, so you go there, and go. To the, I think that's the... Uh, Again, I have no clue where her kneecap is. Okay, I'm just going to switch back to this so I can see where the lag is going to go. So there. Just to check. Yeah, I got the knee right. Okay, so yeah. Uh, now you're just going to make sure that your, all your bones that you created for your limbs are in a correct spot. So that's pretty much good. And that's it's not too terrible. Okay, so there you got it. It's all centered. Uh, the arm's already centered. Got the head and everything. Okay, so now you can just hide your mesh and um, just look at it and awe how beautiful your skeleton is. So anyway, um, once you have that, you're going to select the limbs for the right side, or actually the left side. You want to mirror them over. So I've highlighted the bones that I want to mirror. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select on the arrow. And I'm going to click on the pivot. And I'm going to go down here to, uh, I think it says origin or whatever. Uh, but anyway, to access the sub menu, you're going to you're going to left click and hold, and this is going to pop up. And you can select this. Okay. Uh, now in that selection mode, you want to click on the mirror button. The mirror button looks like two triangles touching the centerpiece. Okay. Once you click on that, you'll see that your bones transferred sides, so from the left to the right, whatever. Um, but uh, you're going to change it from no clone to copy, and now it's created a copy. Okay. And now, uh, to make sure that everything's linked, you want to move the pelvis bone, which was the very first bone you created. So, uh, if you notice, the other bones are just staying there. Okay. Uh, what you want to do is link all those bones to the the center bone. Well, not, not the pelvis bone, I mean the spine that everything that's going up you want to attach something to it so uh, we're going to use this this uh, other button here called the, the select and link button you're going to select um, your shoulder and you're going to join it to the upper spine and same with the other side and you're going to attach the legs to the pelvis okay so now this creates a complete bone chain where all your bones are connected somehow and one bone controls them all pretty much okay so yeah Okay, and uh, so yeah, there's your bone chain. Okay, as long as you don't see nothing poking out, then um, you're pretty much guaranteed a no fail. So yeah, there's your bones. Uh, always start simple. 
don't make like a billion trillion gargillion bones and think it's going to be easy because it's not okay less bones less rigging quicker it is to get your model in okay uh, so before you start uh, rigging you have to make sure that your character is welded so if I just disable maps here um, you can see all these lines on the model okay these are just uh, indicators that the model is actually broken up so I can probably select pieces of it and pull it apart okay um, if you can pull them apart like that then when you go to add your skinning to move around um, most likely what you'll have is parts coming off of her like that when she tries to move so what you have to do is you have to weld so going into vertex mode we're going to select all so go to here go to select all okay control a whatnot and you're going to weld so over here it says uh, weld and under um, selected you're going to weld by a very low factor okay so we're going to hit select it um, so now you can see all that smoothing is now smoother not as smooth because some of it's kind of messed up. But anyway, um, I shouldn't be able to pour, pull parts of her away like that. Um, well, that did, but uh, that's okay because I don't think that's really technically attached to anything because it's a low poly model. But anyway, uh, so that's that. Um, now you're good to rig. Um, I'm just going to highlight everything and try to smooth it with auto smooth. Maybe that was too much. Uh, let's see, 30. That way, uh, whoa, 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 way too much. Yeah. No. Yeah, that's, that's better. <clears throat> yeah, it's not as bad as it was. Okay, so yeah, um, now the model's ready to rig. So yeah, uh, you create your bone skeleton and you reviewed your model to see that uh, there are no obvious problems with it, which could lead to animation issues. So that kind of comes with experience, but uh, anyway. Next, you're moving on to skinning it. So going to your model, you're going to go on the modif modifi the modifier tab or drop down sorry and you're going to add skin not physique okay don't use that never use that because it's evil and don't use it okay you're going to use this one that says skin okay if you read somewhere or saw a video that says use this then just ignore what they said because they're stupid you're going to use skin okay so use skin uh, from skid you can go to bones and add all your bones so that's probably all the things that say bones <laughs> Okay, uh, you can go back and rename your bones to logical names. Uh, you may even want to rename them to the X and A lower bone names. So, just start up X and A lower and look at the bone names and just rename them like my arm. Okay, I don't even really know what that's. That. It's like the right shoulder. Right. So yeah, you just name your bone names to logical names if you want. Whatever you can just leave them, or you can just leave them. They they can just say bones. It doesn't really matter. Whatever. So anyway, yeah, here's the model. We've added skin to it, and we've added bones. Okay. Um, if you notice, the model is now kind of already skinned. So if you uh, move the animation slider to somewhere like five and hit uh, Auto key, we now enter animation mode, and we can animate the model a little bit. So um, you can see the limbs already kind of move. Okay. So what I would do is I would go around and I would move all the limbs and um, keep burping. Sorry, I burped again. Okay, so yeah, um, I would just move the limbs in kind of like a, a really wacky fashion. Okay, like a, like like I would just mess her up, like really mess her up. Like she'd be like weird looking. So yeah, I would just really screw up the pose the best I could. something like that okay now that this will indicate any any uh, problems I have with the rig and what need to be fixed okay so now this is what they call um, skin waiting because now you're gonna be fixing stuff right anyway um so what we're gonna do is we're gonna fix all the, the things that look stupid so one thing that looks really stupid is your really long ch uh, chin here so if you click on skin, you're going to enable the skin modifier and you can change stuff, okay? To be able to actually change the vertices, you have to turn on vertices, okay, from the skin tab. Then scroll down and you're going to open up the toolbar, which is called the weight tool, and then I'll bring up this little float box, okay? So, obviously, first thing we're going to do is just find the chin and we can use the grow and shrink to better select what we need to select, and we're just going to assign one. Okay, 
and you're going to do that for anything else that's uh, pulled in a unnatural fashion. Okay, probably something like this. That's uh, no, gonna. Where's the thingy bobby? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, et cetera. You're just gonna continue to do that. That looks messed up too. All right, so that's pretty easy. Okay, then once you get all that done, then you can just start smoothing things out. So this leg doesn't look very nice, it looks kind of jagged. So you're just going to highlight the region there and you're going to hit blend. Okay, and maybe you want it to blend the other way. So you're going to select the opposing bone there and you're going to blend it. Maybe you just want to undo it because it, it went uh, too much blendy. You're going to just highlight only the areas you want to blend and there you go. Okay, same thing with the shoe and the rest of the body limbs, okay? It's kind of confusing because in 3ds Max, um, I don't know about the new 3ds Max, but certainly in 3ds Max 8, um, you can see that all my envelopes are actually in their default pose. So if I want to select the vertices for that stupid bone, i got to select this kind of thing in the middle of nowhere. But anyway... Um, you'll get used to it. Another way you can select things if you go through the tab you can highlight your bones that way. Okay, you can select the various various bones. But uh, since I don't have anything named uh, logically that's kind of difficult for me so I just select the envelope. In case you're wondering how the heck I'm doing this. Anyway, um, boop. So yeah, that's basically how you do it. So you just highlight and do you blend. Okay. That's pretty much it. Okay, so yeah, it's pretty simple. Um, you just do this for anything that looks kind of messed up, for example her stomach which is extremely messed up and you just hit blend so yeah it's um I wanna say it's that easy but uh, I'm sure somebody's gonna be like I don't know how to do it it's so difficult and I'm sure somebody will so yeah but it isn't really that difficult uh, and I'm actually I'm, to my understanding actually max is probably the worst to actually do your skin weighting in from what I hear from other people there's a lot of other programs out there that do a better job but I think that has to do with more with um, automated process rather than this is more of a manual process than than a manual process or wait did I say the backwards I meant this is a more of a manual process than it is an automatic process so there's there's a lot of programs out there that uh, use uh, gizmos and little helper things that, that get you um, perfect rigs within a matter of uh, minutes okay this is a lot more manual and uh, you would notice that more dealing with larger polygon models. Okay, but still, 3ds Max is a great package, and uh, you can still get what you need to get done relatively easy and quick. It's a nice package. I actually like it. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's basically done. Okay, I might just go around and fix some other stuff, but uh, that's pretty much done. Okay, uh, you might want to spend some more time rigging your model, okay, because this was just quick, but... Um, Otherwise, it's done. Okay, so once you do the one side of the model, you can um, you can exit your auto, bring it back to default by putting the slider back to zero. Enter your skin, and in skin, you can go to mirror. Okay, you'll see that your model divided in the blue and green. So from here, you're going to select two buttons. So we want to bring over the left side to the right side. So that's blue to green. So we're going to hit the second button, blue to green, then the fourth button blue to green and that copies out everything so now if we move the animation slider back um, it's going to animate on the other side you can see some of the issues should have fixed themselves um, if they didn't you would fix that side up on the left side then mirror it back over to the right do it again vice versa and that's how you get that kind of quality out of your rig by doing animation testing anyway um, once that's all done select your entire mesh and everything select the animation keys and delete them Okay, no, can't do that anymore. 
So that's that's waiting. Okay, this model was relatively easy. Larger models with more polygons would take you probably the better part of the day because there's fingers, face, face bones, mouth. This one just doesn't even have a face. It's just it's the just a rock, a painted rock face. So <laughs> that's why I picked it. So I don't have to get too complicated with the rigging. Anyway, so once that's done, you're pretty much good to export the stupid thing. Um, right here, this is on a different drive. So we're going to bring over our project files um, over to um, a subfolder in your data folder. Okay. So 3D, uh, sorry, XNA Laura will search your models um, through the data folder. So we're going to create our model in here. So we're just going to call this. Oh, what's her name? Leisha. I spell Leisha. No, it's Erica. Oh, whatever the hell. Whatever. Okay, so yeah, we're just going to bring over our stuff. Um, in 3D Ma uh, 3ds Max 8, um, it's easy to do that. You can just go to File and go to Archive. Okay, and you can actually save all your project files. Um, in 3ds Max 2011, I've been unable to find that feature, so I guess you just have to copy and paste the old-fashioned way. <laughs> Otherwise, um, this is really handy. It um, copies everything to, to a zip folder, and I can just bring my project files over here and my textures, and I'm done. Just view this by large. So she uses two textures. Oh, she has a normal map. Never do that. Wacky. Who knew the PS2 had normal maps? Okay, so yeah, that's uh, that's that, and now we're ready to export to our XNA lower folder. Okay, so um, export features we have selection only, reparent bones, and optimized output. Um, optimi optimized output basically. When my script processes the polygons, it's going to try to reduce the amount of data that's getting put out of the file or whatever. Um, if you disable that, then it's not going to do any of that processing. It's just going to spit out a file. So to give you perspective, if I spit out a large model that's unoptimized, it could be somewhere around 10 megabytes. Okay, But if I optimize that output, the file could be around 5 megabytes. Okay, so you get that almost double size difference there. Um, I find that if you leave optimized on, it's actually faster. Not that it is, it is any faster, it's just um, it takes max twice as long to write out a file that's 10 megabytes than it is to write out a 5 megabyte file. But uh, the processing time would probably be different between the two. It's just there's more of a benefit using optimized rather than raw. Anyway, uh, reparent bones. Um, I'm going to show you guys that later. Basically, if I export this into XNA Laura, your model is going to be like underneath the floor. Okay. So to fix that problem, I added this feature called Reparent Bones. Okay. Which I'm going to illustrate after I export it. Uh, export by selection. Okay. Say I had like multiple Felicias. So um, like one here, one here, and one here. Okay. So you have like four of those in the scene, but I only want to export one. So basically, yeah, so you just highlight that and you, you go when you enable selection only, it'll only select it'll, it'll, it will only export what you select. So if I select that that one model, only that one model will export. Okay. So that's what export by selection is. Okay. Uh, by default it's turned off because most of the time you're probably gonna you probably want to export your entire scene. It's just when I was beta testing, or not beta testing, when I was testing uh, the script, I had a few different objects in the scene with uh, a few induced issues with them, and I was just testing them at different different times, but they were all in the same scene, so that was important to me to be able to just to select and work with what uh, whatever I wanted to export at the time. Okay, uh, report report one is going to show you guys that guys we showed you. Okay, so that, that's pretty much it. Uh, that's it with the the converter GUI. Um, Right here is the version number and the release date, and the about button is just me going blah 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 with my email there. So, yeah, nothing secretive about that. So yeah, yeah. So we now we can export. So when you hit the export button, you get to pick a path to export it, 
and uh, I already created a folder in my uh, XNA folder, XNA lore folder under data and uh, Chaos Legion. So now when we export it, uh, you have to name it a special file name. So it has to be generic underscore item dash uh, mesh don't ask you. Okay, make sure you keep that memorized in your head. Um, I don't force it, so you have to name it that. I left it so you're, you're flexible to name it whatever you want. But uh, XNA Laura will crash if you don't have it named to generic underscore item dot mesh dot ASCII. Okay, so it has to be named that specifically. Got that? Hopefully you, you understood that. So yeah, then once you do that, you just click save and it's going to go. Okay, uh, when it's complete, um, it's actually going to, it's going to, um, come up with a uh, error box that just notifies you with the completion time. So it says ding, but it's not really an error. It says done, operation completed in 60, 68 seconds, so that's a minute. Again, that's slow, and you can see there's only like, how many polygons do you think? It's like, oops, it's probably not even a thousand. No, that's four thousand. Anyway. So there's your mesh there. Um, this is where you're going to need the converter. Okay, gotta go find the converter now. Where are you, converter? Yeah, I might as well just copy that. Okay, chaos leader, what I call it. Okay, so we're gonna paste those two items there. Like I said, you're gonna need the uh, text to b the binary converter from Dunstan, and you might as well just copy the shortcut for the the program there. So we're gonna drag and drop to there, okay, and boink. Okay, uh, again, if you're running Windows 7, it's, or Windows Vista, of course, it's gonna have the UAC on. If, unless you disable it, you won't be able to drag and drop at all. So to do that, you would find command prompt, right click, run as administrator, and then you would type in your, your path. So you go CD space, and you just paste your path in there. And then you would copy this, paste that, and then you would paste in the name of the file you want to process. Okay, so that's command line. So then you just hit enter, and it would do the exact same thing. Okay, anyway, otherwise, it should create this mesh file, and you're ready to test. So to start up X near Laura. Do -do 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 -do. Laura to the rescue! Okay, so anyway, uh, you can now go to add models, and we're going to add that KS Legion model. Boink. Okay, there you go. And you notice how she's like in the ground? Yeah. She looks shiny too. Anyway, um. See, there, there are normal maps there, apparently. Don't really seem to be doing much. I can seem a little bit. So, yeah, there's, there's, there's uh, the model. Like I was saying, your model will spawn in the middle of the floor. Okay. To uh, fix that, you're going to use the reparent option. Okay. Otherwise, your model is complete and it's here. Move the limbs, whatnot. Okay. Everything that uh, you had in Mac should be here. Haven't had any problems with bone translations or whatever, so should be all good. Um, that pulling there is just a bad skin job I did. The vertex waiting. But, uh, where's the darn legs? Ah, oh, legs. Yeah, anyways, the stuff is whatever it was in Max, so. Oh yeah, I kicked you with my really crappily rigged leg and really bad normal maps. Yeah, okay, so yeah, that's um, that's the export function. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys export with reparent on, reparent all bones. And uh, from here again, you can just use the fixed path if you want. You don't have to keep reopening the browse box. This is good if you're just testing the same model over and over again. Do, do but it does take a long time. But anyway, um, I left the completion thing on an error box, so you'll hear that ding. You, uh, you of course you can't hear it, but um, it does go ding. So if you if you want to go do something, you hear that you can just keep doing whatever you're doing somewhere else, and then you hear that ding, you can just come back. <laughs> it does take too long. Anyway, um, yeah. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but when I hit the export button that time, uh, you saw that black box come up. That was actually the command prompt box. So if you have your USA, uh, UAC disabled on your Windows 7 or Vista and you have this executable in the same folder path as your text file, 
um, 3ds max the script will execute this for you so without you having to do this manually 3ds max will do that for you if the executable is present in your project folder and you have the USA, USAC disabled okay so you don't have to keep doing that every time just let you know so you can just pop that there and then this will just do it for you automatically otherwise um, we're gonna start this up now and did I just did I turn that on reparent bones yeah I did okay so let's go to add that model and see what happens okay so now you see that model is somehow magically now standing on top of the ground instead of in the ground so yeah that's what that button does it has this thing called the ground a root ground and now they're not stupid so yeah that's the import and export for 3ds max for xna laura in a nutshell GUID doing both import and export how goes the video um, still talking <coughs> okay so um, yeah so again um, that's the video um, like I was just telling uh, Chris there uh, my videos go on way too friggin long like I've been talking for probably an hour now and my dog is going to go outside you want to go outside I'll bring you outside it's okay buddy I'll bring you outside he's gonna pee on my carpet okay um yeah he's peeing on the carpet yeah I'm gonna play with you in a minute yeah you woke up I know you did hello you're tired. Oh, you're so cute. Hello. When I post this video up, I'm gonna post a picture of my dog. I have the most adorable dog. Anyway, um, I'm gonna find that topic there. Okay, yeah, I'm coming. Shoot. So yeah, here's the topic. Um, more questions? Ask here. Whatever, whatnot. Script again. I'll put here and again with this video when it pops up there. Okay, I'm um, just trying to think if I forgot anything, but I don't think I did. The GUI is well explained. Um, there shouldn't be any issues unless you have something odd in the scene. Otherwise, I think this converter is pretty solid, regardless of the slow exporting and importing speed. But uh, it's a good addition to 3ds Max user, users who want to get involved with the XNA Laura scene. Okay, okay. so thanks for watching, and uh, see you around the forums. Okay, goodbye.